those tools I'm speaking of, background. Background is part prior knowledge, it's what does the child bring into my class, but if I've given you a rich task, what will I need to know before I can solve that task? What of that do I already know? What additional learning do I need? And how can I help you learn that? So there's a couple of pieces there. Right away I have to differentiate the learning. If a child comes in with a lot of background, how do I make sure I don't make them go back through a lot of that content again? They come in with less background. How do I shore that up? You come in as an ESL learner. Will I use more visuals? How will I differentiate that learning so all children can access the content? And one of the things we need to be thoughtful of is I want to engage all my children in building that background, but I have to think about how they learn that background. How will I support them in doing that? How do I do that in a way that's not merely transmission? This is one of the interesting challenges. How do I not simply say, here's the content you need? So for example, can I present them yes and no examples so that they have to build the definition? Instead of me saying, here's the definition for nationalism. What if I said, well, here are yes examples and here are no examples. What's different? Can you build the definition for nationalism? So note there are ways I can tweak how I deliver content to students that engages them in being actively involved in constructing their background knowledge. So that's one of the distinctions we want to make is the construction of background knowledge with children as opposed to the transmission of background knowledge.